was a great stone entrance. Maybe Stevenson wasn't barmy after all. He'd given Morty a look at things and made him swear a sacred promise, a promise not worth, worth beetle spit to Morty. Now, here he was, the one who'd figured it out, figured it all out from that what Stevenson had told him and from listening to the natives. No one else had the brains to listen, he thought. And there it was, the sacred prize, exceedingly valuable, enough to retire on. Aristocratic wife, hunting parties, liaisons with maids and serving girls. He strode through the door with a half smile on his face, but cried out in surprise as his ankle caught at the tout vine set low to the door. Bloody creepers! He looked back, saw that it was a, a turbaned native he'd shot, and moved further into the temple. There was a steady hum coming from further inside. Then the world began to move. The rumbling was quiet at first, almost soothing. Then the jungle began to roar and squeal and cry out, and hundreds, literally hundreds, of animals came racing through the clearing, hooting and barking and cawing. Earthquake! Surely nothing to do with his presence. Morty stepped back out into the clearing over the broken vine. The rumbling did not stop. A great fissure appeared parallel to the entrance, and dark water roiled up from below, frothing and gushing, claiming the screaming animals, the natives, poor Morty, and, indeed, the entire peninsula. The water had risen up like an avenging cloud of insects devouring all in its path. Eventually, the rumbling faded away, leaving only the calm surface of the newly formed bay. In Memory William Stevenson was an English soldier who served with the British Army during the 18th century. While stationed in India in 1766, Stevenson stumbled across an ancient temple with a mysterious stone-carved map mounted on a specially carved dais. Working as quickly as he could, Stevenson managed to pry five of the map's nine stone tiles off the wall before he was discovered by a guard and was forced to beat a hasty retreat out of the temple. A few years later, Stevenson was recalled from India and sent to Boston to deal with the empire's upstart colonies in the New World. Stevenson fought bravely until 1780 when he was among the British troops who surrendered at the Battle of Cowpens. When the war ended, the colonials set him free. He then traveled west in an attempt to leave the conflict behind and somehow rescue his good name. The Stevens family, uh, the name having been shortened in the New World American tradition, would most likely have been completely forgotten if the Earth had not been invaded by the Possibility Raiders. Your group of Storm Knights, Peaches, Chris, Rios, and an Artorius and Nightbird, came into the story when you were called to help solve certain elements of a number of murders that had taken place in and around Memphis, which, by local police description, seemed to have all the elements of otherworldly affectation to them. Following the clues, you came to find out that the elements from the new... Uh, that elements from the new empire of the Nile, Pan Pacifica, and the Cyber Papacy all sought the same and using their various degrees of knowledge and resources, all came to the same conclusions. Though suffering a loss, Artorius, you eventually saved the tiles from use by forces not of this earth, taking some of the wind out of the sails of those who wish ill on you and all who live on this planet. Not knowing that, well, what the tiles were all about, the Delphi Council promised to study them as rapidly as possible and find an answer for you, which they were unable to do. Instead of signing you to go to a temple in a tiger refuge on the India-Pakistan border to find the uh, find any information you might be able to glean from the journey, you caused no stir no stir in route. But it seems the forces of the Nile Empire were follow, following your lead anyway, as they only knew they were looking for the temple Stevenson found in 1766. On arrival, various spies alerted the insidious Wuhan. To your presence and he ordered you followed more closely at the temple of the destiny map you moved through quickly after closing the door uh the large stone door and you made your way all to the back all the way to the back where the uh glow was taking place the blue glow you managed to uh decipher the the tiles uh once again all together uh, you took photos, uh, made, uh, made uh, etchings, uh, uh, Darius did, and then you uh, managed to escape, finding, of course, uh, chess in the process. 
and you succeeding and you succeeded in finding your next step which was to go to the next bay over if you will same continent next bay um, and you were able to uh, get hold of get get your bearings okay as it were now let me see if I can if I can make this happen I'm trying to find something in particular okay no nope, that's not it adventures where did I put adventures uh oh oh Paul what did you do <laughs> adventures there it is okay um, and oh for heaven's sake I didn't upload these <laughs> Or if I did, I don't remember where they are. Okay, that's all right. We can choose the file. And then we go to... Oh, no, now I've got to go to OneDrive. I thought I had all of this ready, folks. As usual, I guess I'm behind the power curve. I thought I was doing better, but I guess not. Um, OneDrive, Command Post, Role Playing Game. Oh, no, wrong one. Downloads, Adventures. And this is year one. <sighs> I've got to figure out how to uh, make my uh, icons all stay in the right spot. <sighs> so, possibility chalice, thank you. <sighs> Okay. Was it Chambury that I needed? Knights over Chambury. Um, oh. <laughs> did I do what I think? It, I did. <laughs> That's all right. It's going to be kind of dark, but uh, uh, it'll be it'll be useful. Okay. Did you erase the map? No, I did not. Uh, I forgot to to load it properly, uh, and this is my fault. Okay, that's the first one. I'll get the second one here shortly. Um, why? Oh, why? Okay, let's get this up off of names here. Fantastic! I love it. Okay. So fine. I'll just drag it open like this. Okay, so this actually it has a reason for why I did it this way. Okay, leaving India and traveling over 1,450 miles through Myanmar and south into Thailand, you find yourself on a cliff top overlooking the small city of Chonburi. Unfortunately, something vexing appeared as you closed on, on the clifftop. About three miles offshore, you catch sight of an oil rig resting evenly on the waves of the Gulf of Thailand. By your reckoning, it sits precisely over the site, the destiny map pointed to in the temple north of Tezpur Assam. Are you already too late? Looking through any field glasses you have, it seems the rig is too far out in the gulf to determine more than a single very large marking on the side, a thick-sided rectangle containing two letters, O and K. They appear to be in a simple font, nothing specialized, and black on a white background contained by the sides of the rectangle. Chonbury City lies below. What do you do? And I'm correct that right here is, I mean, well, when the picture was there, it was uh, uh, kanji, right? That was kanji? No. Nope. Just random. Nope. It was, it was an English, it was, it was an American alphabet O and K. You see no other markers or flags or anything like that. Okay. Okay. No. Yeah, the question is, is the K stylized in nope. the... Okay. It's it's uh it is a sans serif K. There's there's no special anything to it. I just I was just wondering if it was the K that we're also familiar with coming from a certain Asian invasion. No, I wouldn't do that to you, right? Yes, you would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. 
I wouldn't. Honest. Okay, you see through me, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, now I need... I actually want the full color map on this one. Oh, um, leave that there. There we go. Okay, so here is the broader map. Okay, uh, I can I can make that a little bit smaller. So you guys are basically coming in about right up here. Oh, let me change this. Change the layer. Uh, pretty much right up here. Okay. Uh, there's there's a ri actually there's a ridge right about here, I guess, and that's what you're looking over. And well, I said it was about three miles away. Um, so it's it's further than it's further than than what you see here for oil seeker. But the arrow just points out, and oil seeker is like way out here. Okay, way out at at, at beyond that the edge of that map. Okay. I don't suppose we could arrange with the uh, Delphi Council to get our diving equipment back. Weird as it was. Um, you may be able to do that, but let me read this next part because this. Sure. What's that? Um, Go ahead. So you're wanting to swim. <laughs> you know I might sink, right? I'm pretty heavy. Um, should we should we draw cards first? You know, somebody might get like a connection or something. Um, oh, yeah, connection or idea or supply card. L l you know what? Let me uh, let me read this next part, and then we'll see about that. Okay. Actually, I suppose while I'm reading, you guys could go ahead. Don't forget, it's five cards each. And you unpause the game. You don't need to unpause the game in order to get cards. Okay. Yeah, that's just mainly for movement. And it's core earth cosm, right? You're in core earth, uh, so your cosm card, uh, yeah, your cosm card needs to come from core earth. Okay, so since the original, now this is something that kind of breaks the fourth wall a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Since the original publication of this adventure in 1990, 33 years ago, quite a few things have changed. Chonbury is well on its way to being a bustling small to medium city for one, and the population has grown with it. Tourist attractions, hotels, and a lot of external investment have turned it from a lively fishing village, providing a wealth of seafood to the territories around it, into a place where the fishing industry is still very important, though only marginally more so than the tourist business, including gambling establishments. <clears throat> And if you're listening, you'll hear some hints. Uh, the population has also uh, has also translated from a mostly Southeast Asian mix of contiguous people into a melting pot of varied races and nationalities, thriving businesses, and at present, peace bringing many for the climate, uh, bringing many to Chonburi for the climate and the goodwill of the natives, which all work to keep in balance. Um, that ba the balance that I'm talking about is between anybody who is not Southeast Asian and anybody who is. Okay, the balance is tentative though, and as a result, like all societies with a desire to grow, non-locals are co-opting more business to come to Chambury and build here. Whether it is a pivot point for uh, from the old that is beginning to change from rotten to the new and more civil. Uh, or just a matter of general unrest between the true natives, the younger generation of them, uh, and all the invaders around them is greatly unknown, though it is suspected to be a bit of both. However, it would be a mistake to assume the sensibilities of the natives and those who've added their likeness uh, here are, by any stretch of the imagination, Americanized. So, they, the idea that there's an invasion going on uh, or, or a war now going on around the earth does not really affect these people all that much, whether native or not. Okay. It's on the television, but they've got the, uh, um, the, they've got the NIMBY effect going on, not in my backyard. Okay. So since it's not in their backyard, even though technically, uh, Arorsh is, what maybe three or four um, uh, stele away from encircling this area, um, it doesn't really affect them. 
Any questions before we kind of get started? Okay, somebody wants to, somebody did get a connection card. Who got the connection card? Is that? <laughs> uh, yeah, but. That would be the crazy dark old guy. Are you going to oh, play boy. it or do you want to hold on to it for now? What do y'all think? Uh, let's well, first, hold on. yeah, what do you, what, full, well, not necessarily. Let's uh, discuss. What do we want? Yet. What was that? All I'm saying is we haven't tried anything yet. I'm saying let's yeah. hold on to the connection in case we run into a bunch of dead ends. But Should let's sure. at least try first. But we'll have a yeah. backup at least, nothing else. Correct. Perfect. So, what do we want to try? Yes, uh, this entire scene is up to you guys. It's it's supposed to be all basically about role playing. So we we could maybe charter a shrimp boat and go check out the oil derrick. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming one way or another we're going to end up on that rig. So we yeah, need to get out there something. Uh, yeah, I mean, shouldn't we ask around, maybe do a Google search of the rig itself before we, like, to get a general feel of what their public image is? Yeah. Why Where's don't the phone in that? That's a good idea, though. Yeah, it is. And, and he's got a phone, so Google. And you're, you're in Core Earth, so you've got the technology to do it. Yep. Man, you're all too safe. Now, question, <laughs> do you guys, uh, before we really get started on the basic research, do you really want to to go get a place, uh, a few hotel rooms or something, and check in with the Delphi Council and, you know, get cleaned up, maybe eat something? Food sounds good. I can use a good drink. Yeah. I need a There's... good bottle of something. <laughs> There's bound to be vodka somewhere. For okay. the maybe, maybe something a bit stronger. <laughs> <laughs> but I think some rest and maybe some possible gear would help us out a lot. Okay. Uh, and and uh, the Delphi Council might have uh, recommendations for us. That and they, like, they might don't... know if this if this oil rig is a front. Yeah, what does Google I'm say just... about it, Chris? Ross? Paul. Okay. <laughs> What's my research? Uh, uh, what do I have to roll? Go ahead and roll. Roll a challenging fine test. So versus twelve. I'm guessing they won't give us a minigun, huh? Uh, they, won't, they won't give us what? A minigun. Oh. A minigun. You know, oh. field place if we need it. That. Oof. Okay, you can spend a possibility or put a card on it. That's it's not a one, so it's not a mishap. Yeah. Let's see. Da, da, da. Uh. Let's see what. Wait, what's my possibility score? Uh, you have five. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll spend one. Okay. This is a very important. Where do we go from here? Okay, hey, there, there we, we go. go. Good success. Okay, that's a good success. All right. Um, the name of the rig is Oil Seeker. <clears throat> um, talking to the Delphi Council and doing Google search, whatever, um, as you're checking in with uh, Sir Fisk, uh, uh, you find that the oil rig has only been in place for about three months now. Um, and it is run by a company called Oil Seeker Kaisha. Literally translated, Oil Seeker Company. That, ah, that's suspicious as hell. That sounds <laughs> um, Japanese-ish. It, it, yeah, but it screams front. It sounds like my kind of place. What do we start throwing punches? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm looking for a fight here. I'm sorry. Well, you may find one later, um, especially <laughs> uh, especially since um, uh, Sir Fisk says uh, you are in a territory that deals greatly in black market uh, uh, goods and services. Uh, oh, cool. Chon Chonbury is is growing, and there are many many legitimate uh, business people there 
Uh, they use the place for uh, uh, business summits, and some of them build businesses or uh, you know f full corporate press things, um, or they build subsidiaries, or they build uh, at least some kind of kiosk somewhere uh, that can help them make money in the area and keep tabs on it. Um, but just don't uh, of for every. For every five or six legitimate businesses you find in Chonburi, you're going to find one or two illegitimate operations. All right. So Fun. don't so, don't ignore the back alleys. So be careful what you buy. And keep an eye on your surroundings so you don't lose a kidney. Watch. Yeah. Watch that you're exactly. Don't lose a kidney. Shadow run <laughs> anyone? Um. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, why don't we go fishing? Disguise ourselves as fishermen and look around the oil seeker. You're kidding me, right? How does this look like a fisherman, even well, with a disguise? You know, uh, to be honest with you, Toma, um, the the uh, occult tech that you're wearing, you've only got three pieces of occult tech, and you're talking about maybe maybe an extra 15 or 20 pounds at most for cyberware it would be several additional ounces but you know pain is pain so why reduce the weight of an item to make it better right um i need some gloves <laughs> yeah. you need probably need a lot more than that uh now uh ginger you ask about getting your old diving gear back and this is when uh fisk uh, responds back you can hear like a little shuffling of paper over the phone and he says well there's there's an Australian man on the beach who uh, has plenty of diving gear and you can tell him that the the Delphi Council is good for it an Australian on the beach any more his name is uh it looks like the name of the business owner is jack firth i don't know if that's actually who you're going to see uh but uh it appears this mr firth is a uh expatriate from australia and no i don't do the australian accent either <laughs> I will go Good through day. Indian. I will go through Indian, Russian, Chinese, <laughs> Irish. Oh. Uh, don't, you don't go good day, mate. <laughs> I can go good day, mate, but nothing beyond that. This is a bit well, unrelated to the game, oh, yeah. but uh, Kat just arrived at her, you know. Oh, you know, in hey. nice, nice. I, I hope she enjoys her trip. And, uh, you know, if she wanted to join us, she could still join us if she's got the equipment for it. Oh, uh, she was uh, uh, visiting her grandmother. So her grandmother probably wants to visit. Yeah. Collar Absolutely. her around the neck and like pin her down and force an hour or so conversation with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, Poor you, thing. she wanted she's to go. The, yeah. <laughs> grandmother Gulag right there. <laughs> That's rough. I'm going to have to cut that out, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I do want to give us one advice for talking to the Australian guy. Do not mention the emo wars. It's a very sore spot in Australia. <laughs> uh, 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 Just saying, be careful okay. and not mention that. Did, did... Not mention which war? The emo wars. wars. And, and... Either of them. Just don't mention anything about emus or emu wars. Kangaroos are fine. So, not emus. So gotcha. while while funny, um, would uh, Toma actually know about the emu wars from Tharkold? Eh. Eh. <laughs> Regardless, <laughs> it's funny. So uh, now, do you? Let's see. You got a good result. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. Uh, you also find out the, the final piece of information that you can get from Google and Surfisk or Surfisk, whatever. Um, the, the oil rig began to be set up in place just over three months ago, but there was nobody inhabiting it uh, except workers until about a month ago. 
and most of those workers were local talent not just natives but uh, imports from other parts of the world who were hired to set it up set up the oil rig did i miss that yeah that was the oil rig and how long ago um it began to be set up about three months ago and there were all was all kinds of local talent who helped to get it into an operational order uh and then about a month ago uh there were monitors hired to to um to uh go out to the rig and check on it every so often but there are no names or anything like that okay all right so what are the kinds of of things that you can call for on cash cab <laughs> That one was your was your uh, Google check, and no, I'm just kidding. You don't get three. There's like five or six things, seven seven things here that you guys can do. So what's next? Well, speaking personally, Darius is none too keen on diving. He would much rather try a boat. Well, it doesn't mean that uh, he can't stay in the boat while some of the rest of us dive. That's true. I mean, I'll stay with him. I'll, I'll, I don't want to sink in the ocean here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's ironic that Darius, aren't you from an island? It's a huge I, island. You I mean, know, I'm diving. And besides, Darius isn't Poor Earth Transformed Isle. Darius is actually from Isle. And back in his home Cosm, no, he wasn't from an island. Uh, ah. Well, true. Okay. So, y'all did that over the course of eating some dinner after having time to clean up and, and kind of store your stuff away in a hotel room. Okay. Um, the feel of the town just walking from the the hotel and it, it's not it's not what we would consider like a five-star hotel here in the states um but it's a five-star hotel there which means probably a two or three here okay uh it's an older building uh but it's it's relatively inexpensive the place is clean uh and the the uh the water runs well enough for showers we're not talking the wild wild west here Uh, but as you're going from the hotel to, you know, whatever restaurant you're trying to get to, and don't be surprised, but most of it is going to be fish, and most of it is, <laughs> is going to be Asian food, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you can right on. You can, Never you, tried it before. You can find a burger, but uh, it's probably going to have squid in it somewhere, ground up into it. So, yeah. Yeah. I, and I've would, always heard the saying of when in Rome, you know? Yeah, when in Rome. Yeah, but but Thai curry is delicious. Uh, there you go. Get, 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 get some coconut uh, fish curry. That'd be, yeah. Is it spice? I, oh, yeah. It's, you know, you could get, like, pepper soup. That would be good. Okay. Um, the spicy thing you've got. <laughs> no. Okay, so you you managed uh, to oh, wait. I forget. He likes pain. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If, if he just wants pain, I'll stab his hand with my dagger. I mean, <laughs> um, I mean, you could try, but uh, no feelings. Well, but They're then, no Toma, you 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 just have to stop dominating yourself. You're gonna go blind. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, that's what the pain thing is all about. I mean, come on, domination. Uh, so anyway, you see some of the restaurants and stuff on the map. Um, uh, you see the, the hospital, uh, Central Chambury, all of that. Um, and so you're going to have to, uh, uh, you're going to have to kind of find your way around, but it's not very hard to find a, a hotel and then get ready to go to dinner. While you're at dinner, you can Google some things. Uh, their internet is not great. So you have to, uh, you know, your, things are going to be kind of a little bit slow. It's kind of like the internet that I just got rid of. 
everybody collectively say ew. Yeah, but wouldn't yeah. wouldn't those capable of the tech level have been given from the Delphi Council um, satellite phones rather than just straight up cell phones? Nope. No. Nope. All right. Let's say let's say no to that. Um, but uh, I mean, th I'm sure that there are some more modern uh, business folk who are, uh, you know, who will have the technology uh, to be able to do that, but you don't at this point. So, you bet. You, so you're finishing dinner, and you've you found that information. Uh, I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of go down the. Uh, the, the list of everyone. Ginger, that actually looks pretty terrible. I, I don't think I'd like Asian food very much. Um, oh, that looks delicious. <laughs> yeah, it's it's coconut milk and... Oh, definitely not. <gasps> I'm hungry noodle, here. Noodles and chunk, either large chunks of fish or chicken. You, you know how they use coconut oil in, um, in uh, the Malto Meal version of um uh the chocolate puffs i can uh, i can taste that crap and i hate it there, there's no <laughs> there's no coconut oil in this uh this would this dish would have a little bit of hot oil um but it's relatively fat free mm -hmm. um the, yeah. the the coconut would act more like cream so think of this as a cream of chicken soup yeah, that's right. what coconut milk is. It's yeah. more of a cream thing, not oil. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, whatever. And, <laughs> and it's really good. So this oh. would be more like a cream of chicken soup. One of my favorite Thai dishes is pad si u, uh, which is wide rice noodles. You know, you know, rice noodles kind of like what you're seeing in the curry soup, but they're almost like lasagna wide. Ooh. And then it's a sweet sort of almost like a teriyaki kind of it's a sweet soy sauce with uh with meat and vegetables it's just really good all right i'm, I'm getting hungry here can we please move on yeah we're we're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna kind of move on here um i i ate some junk before <laughs> before the game but now i am actually kind of getting a little bit hungry so uh what i want to do is chris has more or less had uh, his his ability to eat and research at the same time, but I'm going to go down the list and find out what each of you would like to do. And and just keep in mind, this is taking place over perhaps you know, uh, well the whole afternoon. Okay, you probably got into town just after just after one local time, so you've still got quite a bit of sunlight that you can work with. So peaches, hmm. what do you think? After Go ahead. After she stuffed her face with all their regional food, yeah, New York baby, she like will eat anything. Uh huh. What would you like to do after you eat? <laughs> so, you like rat so you like rats? <laughs> there probably have been some in what she's eating. That's why she doesn't ask. Uh, <laughs> hey, they're, they're pretty tasty, full of protein. <laughs> uh, let's uh, hope that 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 was not the secret ingredient. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's it's time to go uh, find an Australian on the beach. Is anybody going to come with her? Yeah, I'll join you. Take off the vest, take off the shirt, grab a couple beers, make friends with the Aussie. Okay. Darius just put something in the chat that could uh, be interesting to anyone who would be interested in training. Trading. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I want to keep it. Uh huh. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just letting you know that I have it. Oh. Yeah, who, sa who says that the Australian on the beach isn't a woman? Could be. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it, with a name like Jack. Yeah. Jackie yeah. Yeah. Jackie Jack Onassis. Very likely that a woman could be named Jack. Yes. Jackie Onassis mm -hmm. was called Jack. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why you got the tall, handsome, muscular Russian going there. Dude, <laughs> stop. <laughs> hey, this, it's Nashville time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, all right. So I know Peaches wants to go down and talk to the Australian on the beach. 
uh, is out of Darius, Katsumi, and Toma, are any of the three of you going to go? Well, and and Chris, since he's done with his uh, his uh, uh, research, as far as I know. Um, but we're going to get to round two on that here in a, in a minute, uh, if if there's more research to be had. Um, anybody oh, want yeah. to accompany Peaches? Yes. Like I said, I volunteer. Just go shirtless and grab a couple beers. Let's go. Uh, yeah, uh, that sounds like a good way to get some goodwill. Okay. Oh, and, and were we supposed to have draw four four destiny cards or five? Uh, none yet. Uh, well, I uh, I did say you could. I did say you could, and it's five. It's five. Yeah, because you had a uh, a glory. That's a right. A glory. Yeah. So, oh, Katsumi. I, I... Oh, Katsumi. Yeah. Justin, are you there? <laughs> oh, Justin. He might be away right now. Okay. Uh, Chris, what about you? Are you going with pieces also? Uh, I don't see why we should split up, so yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, I, 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 I should say something, um, and it's it's my own fault. Um, we need to, to make sure that Justin is getting turns for speaking and, and stuff like that uh, more often. I, I, I think what it is, is, is I, you know, we're spending too much time flapping our gums as a whole and he's kind of not being able to get in. So I, I just want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to speak. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm not castigating anybody. Don't get that wrong. It's just, you know, role playing is, is great, but when somebody gets left out, they get left out and it, it's, it's not cool. So. Uh, I guess everybody's going down to the beach then. So, let's see. You want to go that quick, huh? So, there's a dive shack down the beach, and there's an Australian named Jack Firth. He's a very muscular fella up top. He does carry a little bit of girth. Um, but his sign, the signs that he has up and, and I mean, he's got a rather large tent, like a, almost a GP medium sized tent. So probably what, uh, 20 feet by 30 feet. And it's got a huge opening up front. Uh, and it's, uh, blue and white. Uh, and, uh, you can see from the signs that are hung in various places, he gives diving lessons and he lists the costs on those. Uh, and, and you guys haven't had diving lessons. Uh, you've been able, uh, let me stop there. Uh, Chris and Peaches have been able to dive. And let's see. Yeah, it was, as far as I know, it was only you two. And that was way, way back, about three months ago. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was also in a... The uh, Nunal Empire's version of diving suits, which were really strange. Yeah, they were very, very strange. Um, I mean, the tech level was within uh, Core Earth, except for any special gadgets that required uh, Eternium to power them. But you guys really didn't check the suits out all that much. The plane was sinking. It was time to go on to uh, Silicap. So... Um, so he lists diving gear rentals. Um, you can outright purchase a whole set of diving gear for $7,500. Um, or you can um, rent a whole set of gear. Where did I write that down at? For about $1,500 each for a day. That's expensive. Mm-hmm. But, this is uh, this is why I really wish one particular person were not in Houston right now. She's got the purse. She's got the persuasion, and she's got the purse. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and see about rolling for her after you guys role play your way into it, because I want to see what kind of bonuses or whatnot you might be able to to get out of this. Um, 
Hmm? Didn't Fisk say to tell Jack that the Delphi Council was good for it? That kind of implies that the Delphi Council was going to pay. Uh, yeah. the, De the Delphi Council uh, will reimburse you. Gotcha. Um, and they will back up. The, the Delphi Council will back up the reimbursement. So forgive me if I if I misspoke on that. No worries. So, I mean, I, I don't know about everybody else, but I've got over sixteen thousand. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm good to spend as well. Really? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it, we haven't had exactly a lot of opportunities to spend any money we technically <laughs> made. Mm, yeah. That's true. So. Okay. Yeah, we we got to talk to this guy first. Yeah, it's it's a good idea to go ahead and talk to him. Well, because one of the things that I'm thinking is if he's giving diving lessons, mm -hmm. obviously he has a boat. Maybe we can contract him for his boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pardon me. Goodness. All right. Um, we've got, uh, we're, we're looking casual. We, we've got beers and stuff in hand. Thank you. Great, great idea. Uh, to who ever brought beers to share. <laughs> and, uh, ask for Jack. He says, good day, mate. And, uh, I'm Jack. My wife Rosie is inside. What are well, you looking hey. for? Hey Jack, we're on a bit of a mission actually. We are looking to dive. Um, and it looks like we've come to the right place. You were recommended to us by a guy named Fisk. Don't know that name. But uh, uh, it, he's right. I have the goods. And you're welcome to to check them out. What's yeah, yeah. Are, are you looking for anything specific? Well, I'm thinking some of us are going to be uh, going to need some lessons as well. Do you uh, offer dry, uh, dive instructions? I do. It's uh it's uh, two hundred fifty dollars per person per hour. Uh, and he he points at his sign, so that you know it's been there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, his, uh, I suppose he's got a boat and everything else on them uh, tied nearby. Uh, he he points out to his boat. It's uh, it's not the greatest boat in the world. Uh, you can tell that probably most of the money that he has invested into this business uh, uh, has gone into the dive gear itself. Most people want to just get out and dive. They don't want to drop off of a ship. They don't want to do anything like that. And he says, uh, he, he does explain to you, any diving lessons that I would give you would start here on shore. And it, probably tomorrow afternoon, we could start on more complex things, getting deeper out into the water, learning how to breathe, uh, conserving oxygen, that sort of thing. Probably, you know, three days from now, we could get you uh, uh, set up to where you're actually uh diving the proper way off of a vessel yeah well we don't want any uh uh i i actually paul i've i've been on a dive tour uh, several mm -hmm. I, I probably could uh certify in beginners diving <laughs> oh okay over and over um i've i've never uh certified for uh deep diving but uh Mm -hmm. um, for for uh, I, I guess a, a day on the beach, uh, you could do the basics and take a forty foot dive, no no deeper than forty feet, mm -hmm. um, with a you know like an hour lesson and then yeah. an hour diving. So you can do that all in one day. Well, that's not what he's pushing. <laughs> he's pushing deep sea diving. No, he's he's pushing time. Yeah, because he gets paid by the hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> per hour per person. 
Yeah, so uh, let's let's see if we can just uh, um, how do we say we're kind of on a mission? And time is time is limited. Well, you already said you were on a mission. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're we're kind of on a mission. We kind of need this quick. So, is that uh, persuasion? I don't know. Um. Hmm. What are you trying to persuade him of in particular? You told him that you're on a mission, but you yeah, haven't uh, given him any basics. Sure, like a a, a one day group rate to say save you does do group discounts to orient us on the diving equipment and take us out to uh, oh say maybe near a derrick somewhere where we can uh, go down just as far as we're capable and take a look around. Just a one day thing. He he gets a crooked grin on his face, and he he points directly out to Oil Seeker, which is yes. like right there. And uh, yeah, no secret. <laughs> he I'm says, not being subtle. No, we're we're not allowed to go out there. It's off limits. Oh really? Yep. Oil she Oil Seeker Kaisha has made everyone in this area aware that the uh, Derek is protected. And uh, you'll not be going anywhere near there, at okay. least not with my equipment. Gotcha. And he he actually emphasizes the word "my." He drags it out, kind of, kind of brings it up an octave, that sort of thing. How much like, does it cost? <laughs> and well, there like there might be other equipment available that he's willing to sell. Yeah. Uh, he no, he he points up over his right shoulder this time when you ask that question, and he says, "There's all the prices, and these prices are competitive around the world." So, oh, yeah, yeah, he's he's not he's not overly expensive, I don't think. I actually looked up the prices for full rigs and stuff. <laughs> Seventy five hundred dollars for for a whole uh, actual modern diving uh, out, outfit. And I was like, $7,500, good night. Yeah, he's saying that if you buy it, he'll he'll take you out in it, because it's then, then it's yours. Yep, that's what <laughs> I figured as well. <laughs> Anybody else going to speak into this? Yeah, I'm open to suggestion, people. That, you know, my character's not big on charm. So, Jack, may I ask you real quick, could you maybe tell us what exactly is near the... Uh, Oil seekers say any patrol boats, people on the platforms with guns and that kind of stuff for about maybe 150. He says, well, mate, you just get right to it. Um, Straightforward is what I try to be sometimes, you know, easiest way to get information. He says, keep your 150. The best I know is that uh, tenders go out uh, every day or every few days to at, at you know different times to go check on oil seeker to make sure everything is is remaining in order that nobody's getting too close diving on the rig anything like that did they have a place where they usually dock near the shore near the shore um yeah uh he points down uh there's there's a metric spit ton of of fishing boats out there some of them have motors uh, many of them are older boats. Uh, they're still in good shape, but they're older boats. And there's a bunch of guys hanging out uh, down there. There are boats that go in and come out, or come in and go out every, uh, probably every 15, 20 minutes. And uh, usually they'll go out empty and come back in with uh, all kinds of things. But they're they're not necessarily the same boats. Some of these are going out, uh, out you know, out to the edge of the bay to to get their stuff. And uh, some of the older uh, fishermen and divers and whatnot know, you know, know better places, calmer places. Uh, that are generally either unaffected by storms or unaffected by uh, rip currents or anything like that. Uh, uh, so they can go out beyond the bay into the actual ocean. Do you know anyone who's a bit uh, bold enough to get at least a little close to the oil seeker? Say close enough for people to uh, dive and swim to it? 
he he holds up his thumb against his index finger and the one right next to it and rubs them around which is the universal sign for cash about how much try that 150 that he refused first no you would have to talk to them i'm not going near that rig i like my life and he <laughs> he points to his entire tent and and then he he uh turns to look at his wife uh manning the the uh the counter inside and 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 basically says would you give this up i suppose i wouldn't i mean it's a fair point in my book nothing like having a nice calm business with a family yeah we don't want to endanger um uh. My my first thought when I was listening to Toma was that he was uh, insinuating that we should, like, take the place of some of the guards. Some you know, of what the, guards where? The, 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 the guys that are going out to the rig to check on it. Ah, the tenders. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, why don't we see if we can infiltrate ourselves in that? Is well... That what you're I, okay, I I want to I want to back you guys up. I'm gonna go rooster here, um, out of the game. Um, you guys have already heard twice now that it's generally only one or two people that are tenders, and so one you would have to find out where any tender or tenders may be. Two, you would have to figure out what they are required to do on the rig. And then three, you would have to kind of, you know, you would have to figure out how you're going to get to the rig. Well, it's probably a bit bold, but we can at least find maybe one of them and uh, convince them with some big quotation marks to uh, <laughs> smuggle us out that way. Um. Maybe I uh, know somebody, somebody who can help us with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what do you all think? Well, I, I think that it's a very small group and they all know each other, so it's going to be hard to infiltrate just like that. Any other insight? <laughs> None for me. You guys are doing great. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in okay. for the rest of the group, you know, because I still have that connection card we can mm -hmm. use if we're desperate enough. Yeah, it's what It's kind of what I'm insinuating. We can use that and might yeah. help us out a little bit. It will. It will. But we need to find a, a plan. We need to have a plan that'll work <laughs> with the intel we have. Well, we might need a little bit more intel first. Say, like, who we know the people are, we can try to figure that out. And that's not going to be easy to do, but that'd probably help us out a lot. We just have to find the right people to talk to. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you want? What do you guys want to do? Personally, I'm, I'm wrestling with character knowledge versus player knowledge because Darius would not think in terms of subterfuge because that's not honorable right he, he's much more straight up fight like he's he's in thomas camp let's just go in fist swinging um but as a player i'm wondering if we couldn't just show up as guys from the home office kind of thing you know but that that would be a deception and like i said darius wouldn't go for that Huh. Mm-hmm. Boy, we find ourselves really needing that one person. Hmm. Who's super <laughs> strange. Mm -hmm. Almost like you had an encounter designed for her. Uh, actually, I didn't. This comes from the original adventure. <laughs> but it, 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 I think it was based for folks who have uh, persuasion and test of wills and, and stuff like that. I really miss test of wills from from original uh, anyway so so what's the plan do i do i need to put out the uh the um uh hourglass 
I don't know, mm. but um, maybe we can just try to arrange a plan and see if we can't put Rios up to it. Rio and Chris, both of you are the sneakiest. The speakiest? Did you just the, say the, speakiest? The speakiest. I don't, I don't. Sneakiest. <laughs> oh, sneakiest. Okay. Yes, they are the most uh, uh, sneaky amongst us. So um, I'm thinking that those two could probably talk their way in as, the, you know, the new guys or the relief duty people. Maybe, Maybe, but it, it's it's going to take a lot. Uh, hang on a second. Katsumi, you got any ideas? Not at the moment, no. Okay. Hey, your character should be naturally sneaky. You can totally help us out here. Well, but there's a I, bit I, of a boner oh. idea I have that could use Katsumi's help. Mm-hmm. What is that? Just about every place you go, there's a bit of a seedy uh, underbelly.